and we are live. And with me is uh, Daniel Kmak from Nervos. Hi, Daniel. Um, hi, Antek. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, thank you. I'm really excited uh, to be here uh, alongside uh, so many reputable uh, speakers. And uh, it's great that you're hosting this event. Awesome. I'm very happy to have you. And uh, you're going to teach us about uh, EVM on layer two nervous network. Is that right? Yeah, teach is a big word, but I, I try to do my best to, to explain. Yeah, well, uh, I'll be learning from the basics, but our hackers probably know more. Uh, so without further ado, the, the stage is yours. You can start your presentation. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So the title of the presentation is Optimism Beyond Ethereum. And we'll talk about EVM in non-EVM chains. Um, so you might be already familiar with, with what is an optimistic rollup, but to make sure I also explain it. And we'll talk how you can, um, how you can deploy Ethereum contracts on a blockchain, on a nervous blockchain specifically, um, which, you know, we don't have like where, you know, um, the Ethereum virt virtual machine is built uh, into layer two. So you can deploy Ethereum smart contracts um, to blockchains that are not necessarily, that have not much to do um, with Ethereum. Um, but it's for like cross-chain interoperability of obviously Ethereum. Um, it has a great community, great developers and bunch of great applications and um, it's good if all those blockchains uh, interoperate uh, with each other. So just a few words about me. I'm in the space since 2017. So I've been working three years in Ethereum, um, two years in alternative blockchains uh, recently. Um, I'm, I'm working in developer relations team at Nervous Network, where we are building, where we build our own blockchain from scratch. And right now, um, right now we are building this, we have this EVM solution on our layer two, so you can deploy Ethereum contracts. Um, I have previously worked for Chronologic. So uh, for example, we've been doing, we've been creating their Ethereum alarm clock. You might be familiar with it. I've been also working at Polymat where we did security tokens in security tokens industry and also Energy Web Foundation. Um, where we had our fork of Ethereum, um, where we were using uh, proof of authority. So I've been doing a um, few things in the space uh, for quite some time. And right now I want to tell you about this, about Nervos and, and how, you can, how you can use our layer two. So the agenda for today is split in two categories. First, we'll, I'll talk a little bit about architecture and then we'll talk about how you can actually use it today because um, we have, this is all public, uh, public source. Uh, there are repositories uh, which you can use right now. They are using Docker, so you know, just few lines to start it and you can deploy your own Ethereum contract. But uh, don't worry, it won't be only theory. I have, um, I have pre-recorded pre demo video. Um, I didn't want to do it live because uh, our system is still being worked on. It's it's a bit fragile. There are bugs, so so I have uh, I have videos where I show you how this works, how you can deploy Ethereum contract, how you can interact it with using Web3.js just by switching RPC URL. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into um, what's nervous. So it will be probably hard for you to understand without this context, like why we are even creating EVM on layer two. So, so there was a UTXO blockchain um, for general purpose. So um, the difference between UTX, so you need to know um, one thing. There are UTXO blockchains like Cardano, Nervos, uh, etc., and there are account-based blockchains. And if we are talking about Ethereum, Ethereum is account-based blockchain. Um, so the difference is basically that in account-based blockchain, you operate on like account balances and there's one balance uh, per account. And in UTXO blockchain, it's like Bitcoin. 
so you have many different like you can think of them like safes with monies and if you want to gather all your funds you need to get all those um, safes and UTXO stands for unspent transaction output so <clears throat> so you need to collect those outputs and to construct your new transaction it's quite different programming model um, to what um, account-based blockchains represent um, so yeah uh, Nervos is using proof of work, a multi-asset consensus. It's it's um, a very low-level blockchain. I would say you can implement, for example, you can implement holding you can, uh, uh, different locks for your funds. So you can use I don't know um, Ethereum wallet, Tron wallet, etc. to to operate with your funds. But uh, yeah, the goal of this presentation isn't necessarily to to talk about to explain deeply what is Nervos. So I'll try to uh, keep it short. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, Layer one for storing and verifying state and where layer two comes into play is um, for computation intensive state generation. So that's why we want to have our layer two. And uh, for now it happens to, to operate using Solidity smart contracts. Also let's talk about what is uh, optimistic rollup. So um, briefly it's a layer two scaling mechanism and you want to scale blockchains because um, you want to have um, better per better performance. Like you don't want your blockchain to be stuck at I don't know um, a very low amount of transactions because uh, users will complain that it takes very long time for their transactions to confirm. So that's why you want to scale your blockchain. So optimistic rollup is a scaling mechanism. Um, in this, so there are two kinds of rollups. There are optimistic rollups and zk rollups. In optimistic rollup. Security is based on the assumption that there's at least one honest node um, that if this node sees that something is wrong, it's uh, it's supposed to alert other nodes by raising uh, by by challenging them. And if challenge succeeds, um, aggregators or like operators, operator who behave maliciously um, has to pay because everyone before um, before joining this optimi before operating this optimistic rollup should should stake some funds um, for for the security and um, also one characteristic of those rollups is you have longer withdrawal periods than in zk zero knowledge based rollups because you need to give give people time so so they can, they can challenge and if there's a challenge um, you have uh, you have virtual machine. And you go and you go on chain and you um, and you try to replay those transactions and and you can prove that that someone actually um, behaved in a wrong way. But challenges are are very costly because you need to compute it on chain. So in general, you you want to avoid. So let's let's talk about architecture of of nervous layer two rollup. Mm. So our Layer two scaling solution is called Godwoken, and it's possible, for example, that you deploy Uniswap um, to our layer two, and also use not only Ethereum wallet to interact with it, but also Cardano wallet, Tron wallet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the reason for that is we split like the verifying identity um, from on-chain computation. It, it presents its own challenges, but but we'll get to that at the end of the presentation. There will be um, uh, I, I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, so yeah, this is in addition to our layer one because on layer one we have our Rust smart contracts. But we obviously know that you you guys who are watching are probably more familiar with Solidity. And that's why we want to sub we support it on our layer two. Right now it's using optimistic rollup. But we want um, our layer two to also have be compatible with zk rollups in future. Right now, we are using proof of authority. It's it's a big thing. We are not using proof of stake right now, but it's something it's something we have in mind. And so our aggregators are like um, pre pre selected, and they switch roles with them who's producing blocks, and and. Um, I'm not sure, but it's possible that they also need to stake right now. But yeah, please, please do keep in mind we have a different security model than proof of stake right now. We have proof of authority. 
Um, we support EVM right now, but other virtual machines like EOS, Libra, et cetera, are possible because our good Woken framework is very general. And, and uh, yeah, our layer two is account based. So it's like Ethereum while our layer one is UTXO based. So we actually take the best uh, from both worlds. Available actions in our layer two is basically if you have account on layer one, um, you can deposit into our layer two. Um, you can deposit like native token or, or like we call it SUDT, which is like ERC20 on our blockchain. But yeah, you can, you can deposit <coughs> funds from your layer one, from our, on our layer one to layer, to layer two. That's how you create your account in a rollup. You can also create um, so-called creator account, which is, for example, you create um, creator account for um, for Ethereum, uh, and when you send later when you send transactions to this creator account, it can deploy smart contracts. That's that's how it works right now. So you can imagine that on our layer two there will be a few creator accounts. One will be um, one will be for Ethereum. One will be for um, for Libra, for example, and the point is just um, just to provide provide a way uh, to deploy smart contracts on those different EVMs. You also have a possibility to withdraw. As I said, it may take some time if you want to withdraw, um, because the next thing what you can do is is um, is, is you can challenge and um, and, and basically. And, and basically, if you there needs to be a time for it, so it, it might take a week before you withdraw. But there are also different stuff that you can do to work around it, like liquidity bridges, etc. But uh, yeah, so far this is this is what you can do. Um, so this is like very general terms, very general actions. Of course, you can the most interesting thing you can deploy smart contracts. Um, so. Um, so maybe maybe I'll show you the demo right now, um, so we don't talk so much about like theoretical stuff, um, because this is what you're probably most interested in. So um, okay. <clears throat> so basically, I have pre-recorded three videos uh, a few hours ago because I wanted it to be smooth process. So I didn't. Want, there are still some bugs. And there are dragons in this de demo. For example, if I send transaction, it's sometimes stuck in MetaMask and I have to restart browser. I didn't want to do it uh, during the presentation. But what you can see right now is there's a repository on our GitHub. And with few actions, you can. It's, it will start nervous uh, developer network for you. It will create, it will start a layer two node. Uh, Ethereum compatibility layer, Web3 layer, and it will give you this page. And here on this page, you can use your MetaMask uh, to connect to it. Then, um, yeah, maybe I I play it. So, so if you first you need to connect your wallet, and as you can see, uh, the address the address is changing. Then we clicked uh, deploy CKB. So it's basically depositing um, layer one CKB asset into layer two. So you have some balance in this rollup, and and you can um, and we will be later able to deploy Ethereum smart contracts. So right now we are waiting. We are waiting for this transaction to complete. All right. So deposit succeeded. We need to refresh the page to see the balance. But your account has been created in our layer two. Um, by the way, we are using MetaMask all the time, Ethereum addresses, so you don't need to care about anything nervous related. OK. And here we pressed deploy Ethereum uh, contract. I selected a pre-compiled uh, bytecode. So you, know, you have a Solidity smart contract. You need to compile it, and then you need to save deployed bytecode in a file and then when you click it you will have a file explorer and you need to select it and now we are waiting for this contract to deploy and um, by the way 
that this is something which is publicly available and I'll give I show you a link to this uh, later but everyone can try it and uh, it's just like two comments to, to start it so yeah okay so our ethereum contract has been deployed in a rollup and uh, and we have the address so right now we can use this we can interact with this smart contract and uh, and I have like ethereum application that I was using for like I even run like a blockchain workshop using this concept. So header tails games where, you know, you toss a coin and whether it's head or tail, someone needs to guess. And if you guess, you win. So I was giving this, this workshop last year on Ethereum and I just switched like RPC a URL from Ethereum to our layer two rollup. And it, but it's basically using Web3.js. It's not any fork, just original Web3.js. And uh, yeah, so you can see um, we need to paste the address of the contract. Uh, sorry for the UI. I know it's I know it's ugly, but it's still work in progress. <clears throat> we can call uh, methods on a smart contract. As you can see. Um, for example, there are some addresses saved in a smart contract and, and we can uh, get their values. If we, if we do deposit action, then basically um, those addresses uh, should change. Money should be deposited in a smart contract. There are bugs, but we, they are being ironed out. So, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show that we already have something working, which is great. All right, so we press deposit user one. All right, and now we can see that first user address changed. So, so actually depo depositing tokens into smart contracts succeeded. The address was saved in a smart contract uh, in a rollup. <clears throat> and uh, one thing to note is the address that is being saved is different from the address that, that was sending the message. And this is because when you deposit funds into our rollup another address is being created for you and this is because we this is because we want to interoperate with different wallets so you can use ethereum wallet to interact with the smart contract tron wallet etc etc and that's why signing these messages is you have a different address when you deposit but uh, <clears throat> what we plan to do or we already did that, but I haven't tried it yet, is um, you have in your Solidity smart contract, you need to call a function that will take this address that you see now and it will translate it to your original Ethereum address. But um, this, is still, this is still being developed, so I didn't want to uh, show it here. But yeah, we successfully called some Solidity smart contract methods. And right now I'm choosing a second account because this is a bet, so you need to have two sites. Um, yeah, second account is depositing funds. Yeah, and now it broke, so, so I had to restart my browser, unfortunately. Um, so, so I have second video. Yeah, and, and we can see that uh, deposit contract balance has changed. It has like, so it, it's, it's sec, uh, the funds of the first, um, of the first player were successfully deposited in a smart contract. And, uh, and yeah, right now we want to deposit as a second user. We have a different account. So we press guess. Um, yeah, and here it's here it broke again, but yeah, as I said, it's fragile, but but it's it's working. We need to just uh, make little things better. Um, but yeah, as you can see, um, second address depo second user deposit also worked, and the address is changed. Um, The address is changed. Yes, yeah, so we can see both users were able to deposit their funds using the Solidity smart contract in a rollup. And, 
And yeah, right now also you can see the L2 balance in a console, which is like 399999223, which means that this user, this user deposited uh, those funds, but no one already won the bet. But later we will see after the node processed it that, yeah, so if we, because at the end we need to submit original choice and settle after two users deposited. So I, I press this here. We are waiting for this to happen. All right. And you can see the L2 balance in the console change from 3999223 to 40077N at the end. It means that this user won the bet. And, and it means we have successfully validated the workings of this Solidity smart contract. Um, on the layer two uh, rollup, which is um, which is great, and uh, and uh, yeah, maybe we can we can jump back to to the um, to the presentation where I'll talk more more about how it works um, under the hood. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the block processing in this. So as I said, we have uh, some operators who are operating this, this rollup. And there's a different transaction format than we have on our layer one. So, so they work with a slightly different like uh, standards on, on the layer two. And then those Godwalk and layer two operators, they, they need to, they are submitting transactions to our layer one, which you can view as layer two uh, blocks. So here we have a picture of how, how this works. Um, yeah, we have layer one blocks, then the operators who are submitting layer two blocks and, and uh, aggregators like aggregating transactions. They also aggregate transactions. So you send your layer two transactions to, to those aggregators. So you need to run um, a layer two node and probably you also want to run like web three layer. So users can s just send like normal Ethereum transactions and it works. So, so yeah, this is just like some logs from, um, from, from the running Godwoken node. As you can see, it's watching the network, it's producing new blocks. It's also watching layer one and, and syncing there. Um, we, we incentivize um, those networks. So for example, we have transaction fees, the same as in layer one. It's also possible to have multiple deployments of this layer two networks. Uh, so for example, it, it's not like we, will, we have like nervous and there will be only one layer two. You can deploy multiple networks with different tokens to pay the fees. So you can change security model. You can change like the people who operate it. You can impose some restrictions, but in the end, um, as a user, you will have a choice which which rollup um, you want to use. And um, the Ethereum compatibility in Godwalken is built using polyges because, as I said, it's it's possible to have compatibility also with other blockchains like EOS and and other. But right now we have built this thing for Ethereum because I think it's the biggest community developer community. So yeah, any Solidity smart contract running on Ethereum today should be able to run on Polyges. Um, there are some things that might be, that you might need to change. Like for example, verifying digital signatures on chain, but we will provide a way to, to make it, to make it smooth anyways. Um, Polyges is using EVMC under the hood. So like, like Ethereum virtual machine implementation in C, but, um, but yeah, but we can add some EIPs that uh, that are not implemented on Ethereum, for example, um, because we control this implementation. And yeah, as I said, there are some differences um, to to deploying a smart contract on Ethereum and on our rollup. But we plan to have a ways to to 
to make it easy to, to, to work around them. So to give you a high, high level look at all of these things, how they work together, you can think of this like, so first you, need, you have layer one, then on layer one you have, um, you have like scripts, so you can think of it as those funds that are deposited into our layer two are locked with those, with those scripts, so they are safe and it, when you lock them on layer one, it doesn't mean that like, okay, now anyone can take them because you lock them. It, no, it's, it's secure. It needs to be like, it needs to be like sign. It's checking your keys, et cetera, et cetera. So, so this is like a security <coughs> measure for deposited funds. And then we have good woken, which, so you need to run good woken node in addition to layer one node. And this node also aggregates layer two transactions. Then you have Polyjuice, which is a backend. So which is, you can consider like a plugin to this Godwoken node. And it's like Ethereum plugin. And then you have Godwoken Web3. And this is like a service interface that, um, that also gives you an endpoint, which you can use as RPC URL. And this is basically to, to serve as compatibility layer. It does like the heavy lifting for you. So when you send like Ethereum transaction, for example, you want to uh, send 10 tokens to some other person. In MetaMask, when you click, you see like the normal um, dialogue where you send transaction to someone else. And, uh, and later this transaction is sent to this Godwoken Web3 layer. It translates this, it sends it to Godwoken. Godwoken uses Polyjuice to, to process it and, and, and runs virtual machine to, to check state transitions and um, and, and this is basically this is basically how it works. So it, it contains multiple uh, elements that that you should know that they are they exist if you want to if you want to deploy contracts on our layer two. But basically, it's it's this was all created to abstract those things um, away from you. So yeah, here you can see some example logs from the Polyjuice backend, um, how it operates. Um, checking some stuff and also uh, Web3 layer. As I said, this is already working. You can check this out. You can clone the repo. You can you can start it. So let, let's talk about more how how you can use it. So these are the the most important repositories. So um, if you if you type Goodwoken GitHub or Goodwoken Kicker in Google, you will definitely find it. And, and Goodwoken Kicker is a repository which allows you to start a devnet and also start Goodwoken examples. So this page that you saw where you can deposit funds easily into layer two and also deploy Ethereum contract. This is what you can do using Goodwoken Kicker. Then you, you have Goodwoken examples. This is used by Goodwoken Kicker. And also you can use Goodwoken examples without running um, our layer two node yourself while setting, setting up the infrastructure because you can use <clears throat> good local examples with, uh, with the deployment on our testnet, um, which, <clears throat> which is pretty cool because you don't have to set it up. And uh, yeah, then you have good local web three, which is this compatibility layer, good local polyjuice, which is this backend. And you can see how we implemented this this EVM uh, compatibility, and then you have uh, Godwoken itself. So we will find their like code for running the nodes. Um, what else? The logic, for example, for the security model. So the proof of authority code that we have right now, and and you can see like how the things are being verified cryptographically, etc. Et so developer experience, as you saw it, um, it's basically you just use Web3.js and, and MetaMask. You just need to add network to, to the MetaMask and it works. It contains some bugs like right now, like sometimes you have to restart the browser or reset the account in MetaMask, but you can interact with those contracts and it works. And yeah, it, if you use Godwoken Kicker, it's using Docker and Makefile to set up the devnet. 
uh, which is pretty great because uh, it, it abstracts really, it, it makes running our layer two EVM uh, network just like, you know, two comments and it's running. So it's, it's pretty great. Yeah, as I said, just, um, just a few comments. And uh, yeah, here's, here's basically what you already saw in, in the video. So I already explained it, but this is a screenshot from Goodwoken examples. And uh, we also have this SUDT section where you can deploy your, you can deploy your uh, token on our layer one. Then we, we call them SUDT, but you can think of them like, just like ERC20 on our layer one. And, but yeah, you can deploy this using this issue SUDT token, and then you deposit this SUDT token um, to our uh, layer two, and it will be visible as ERC20 token basically. And you can send it in the same way as, as we, as you, uh, uh, you can send it and deposit in the same way as we previously dealt with like uh, native token. Um, so yeah, to deploy an example smart contract, you need to just, you need, you need to have Solidity smart contract, then you need to compile it, then save it as a file without starting zero X pre prefix. And later using this page that I showed, showed um, previously by clicking this deploy it contract, uh, you can just, you can just deploy it. And yeah, you just interact with it like it was a normal Ethereum um, smart contract. There are some caveats, though, <clears throat> to using this stuff. So, for example, this network can be deployed with various tokens for paying transaction fees. So you can imagine, for example, that right now you have your Ethereum on Ethereum main chain, and then using bridge, you bridge it to Nervous Layer 1. Then you start Layer 2 network with this with this layer, with this Ethereum bridge from the mainnet. And basically you can pay fees on our, on our rollup using real Ethereum. It's, it's totally possible, uh, but you can also use different tokens. So for example, you could create a layer two network where you use a DAI stable coin, for example. So I don't know, you have your DAI on Ethereum mainnet, you bridge it to Nervous Layer 1, and then you start this, net, this Layer 2 network um, with this stable coin and you pay for gas with a stable coin. It's totally possible as well. So the second thing is all the tokens in our optimistic rollup are ERC20 tokens, even the native token. So um, sometimes maybe it's good, sometimes maybe it's bad, because if you need some additional functionality to ERC20, you might need to create some like a way to, to translate those tokens, like additional Solidity smart contract that takes those ERC20 tokens and produces a different ones. But this is just for the sake of simplicity of the technology, because we do not want to support every possible standard there because it would be impossible. So, so we just are sticking to ERC20 tokens. Um, then, and this is a big one, we separate identity check from on-chain computation or verification. So you might have some problems verifying digital signatures on our chain right now, but this is all being worked on. And as I said, you should have a Solidity smart contract call or a syscall where, where, where you can translate between those addresses. But for example, if you want to verify a digital signature using smart contracts deployed on our layer two, you might need to specify which address signed this, like whether it was signed by um, Ethereum wallet or Tron wallet, et cetera. This is because we want different wallets be able to operate with those smart contracts, right? And um, this is kind of related, last point. This is 
each time you create, if you deposit from your Ethereum address to our layer two, you will have a new address created. It will look like Ethereum address, but it's actually different. And you should be possible to go from one address to another, but you need to be mindful that Solidity smart contracts see only those like generated addresses um, in Polyjuice. So, as I said, we are providing ways to, to work around those problems. Um, so yeah, we will provide helper functions to convert between Polyjuice, Polyjuice address and the identity address. And identity address is this Ethereum address, Tron address, etc. Um, yeah, if you sign transactions, you obviously use your identity address, not your Polyjuice address, because it would be, it would be um, Im impossible. You would need to have the private key of this address um, in your wallet, basically. Um, but we want you to just use MetaMask, uh, as you saw, to, to interact with it. And uh, yeah, then we have all the Ethereum RPCs, and it's obviously super important to have those, to have 100% compatible RPC with Ethereum. So you can just use all the tools that you have right now. You can, you know, take Truffle, build those smart contracts, deploy them, and just by switching the network URL, all of it works, and you don't need to don't need to care um, about like some differences. There might be some differences, but the address translation will be performed automatically. So, so I think you should get identity addresses in the end, but it's possible that, for example, in your application, sometimes you will get those polygious addresses and you will have to do, have some kind of like mapping between those addresses or do, do some call, um, yeah. And as previously being said, EC recover might behave in a slightly different way than you are expected it to see on Ethereum. But, but uh, yeah, it, it should be possible to, to work around it. And um, finishing this presentation, interesting things for the future. So the thing we are definitely interested in implementing is a true proof of stake based mechanism for issuing uh, blocks, because right now we are using proof of authority. Um, we are interested in transitioning to AZK rollup from optimistic rollup. So you can choose whether you want to deploy optimistic rollup or you want to um, deploy ZK rollup infrastructure. Um, using our bridge, you can bridge assets. You can take, for example, Ethereum, Ethereum on Ethereum mainnet. You can bridge it to our layer one, deposit into our layer two. But also, you our bridge supports, for example, Tron, and uh, and and uh, there's also a proposal to to support Cardano. So, for example, you can take some assets from Cardano, deposit them to, to our layer one, then to our layer two, and then you interact with Ethereum from Ethereum mainnet and, I don't know, Cardano, and, um, and using Cardano wallet and using Ethereum wallet. So users don't need to install any, like, nervous wallet or, or anything. They can just use tools that they are used to. Uh, working with uh, same same for, goes for developers. As a developer, you just use your normal tools, and all of it works. And yeah, you can take Uniswap, deploy it on our um, Ethereum EVM layer two, and then interact with it. You know, someone uses Ethereum wallet, interacts with it. Someone uses Tron wallet, interacts with it. And uh, and because our blockchain is very low level. We don't have a concept of, um, like, our blockchain isn't aware of, like, concept of the account, like, for example, Ethereum is. So you can actually implement accounts of any blockchain that you have out there. You just need to um, create a script in Rust or C that knows how to verify those signatures uh, for, for different, for different uh, wallets. And this is a recommended reading. So what I recommend for you if you want to deploy Ethereum smart contracts right now on our layer two is I would recommend you to go uh, to nervous network slash goodwoken and uh, check the docs. Also definitely check out this, uh, 
this good woken kicker thing where you where you have this page you can you can uh, deploy uh, your smart contract and then use web3 to to interact with it uh, i also recommend reading this document about um, kvits of uh, polygis and this is because it's 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 worth reading because you might see what you might need to change in your smart contracts and if you already have some application running on ethereum and you might and you are thinking of porting it and then it will give you a good idea what you should be aware of might require some slight modifications. Um, so yeah, um, as I said, this is all uh, open source. You can use it right now. Um, for creating this presentation, I only use tools that were uh, open source. So you can verify it's, it's all working. There are bugs, but if you run into some bugs, please open an issue. Uh, on our GitHub, and uh, yeah, we are we are looking for 100% Ethereum compatibility. Um, so, so yeah, you can definitely expect uh, anything, anything, and that's working on Ethereum to be working on our chain. And yeah, we want to create interoperable cross-chain future where users can stick to their wallets whatever they like, but um, but it's all working together. And that's why we why we chose uh, Ethereum for for our layer two right now is it has the best developer community uh, right now and uh, that's why we we support Solidity and and those other tools. So yeah, that's that's it uh, for this presentation. Um, if there are any questions uh, in the chat, um, I'm happy I'm happy to take them. Uh, thanks a lot, Daniel, for the presentation. I have a question for myself. Uh, how, how does uh, Nervous fit into the bigger layer two ecosystem? Uh, at the moment, we have like uh, Polygon dominating the, the layer two market. At the moment, we have Optimism launching soon with uh, Uniswap V3, then we have Arbitrum and uh, many other players. Mm -hmm. um, can you, can you tell me more about how does uh, Nervous fit into this uh, whole ecosystem? Yeah, so I think it's super interesting how it will all fit together because you can imagine like, for example, that you have those liquidity bridges between those different layer twos. And it, uh, from my perspective, it might seem that th these layer twos might be good, but only for like some kind of application like uh, like for example, if you build some specific application, you find that, for example, the Polygon layer two is best for you or Arbitrum is best for you, etc. It's possible that some very good applications will live on different layer twos. And then how you, how you connect them? Um, because do we see a future where one layer two solution will do, dominate all of the applications? Um, I'm not sure honestly right now, because as we see with Ethereum, so you have a lot of amazing applications running on Ethereum, right? But also you have um, different companies that saw that, okay, Ethereum is not the best for our application and we are building something else. But they are not like upset about, okay, okay we, you know, we don't care about Ethereum anymore. No, they just want to tap into Ethereum ecosystem as well. So I think the same will happen with those layer twos. Uh, for example, our layer two, our blockchain is, is focused on like interoperability, having, you know, being able to interact with MetaMask on our blockchain, Tron wallet, Cardano wallet, etc. So I think our main selling point is this interoperability. And maybe someone has to build an application where it's very important for them. And maybe they will use our layer two. But of course you have other applications that will use Polygon and other layer twos, and, and they don't want to run on our layer two, maybe they don't care so much about like tapping into other uh, blockchains users. So I just see there will be very interesting solutions for like bridging those stuff. Um, and yeah, I think this, these things uh, will work together um, for, uh, so it's, I would say it's based on a sp a specific for different applications. Yeah, I bet there is space for uh, many different solutions. Uh, I'm really excited for uh, all the layer twos. Uh, changing the, the the crypto space uh in the next months yeah it will be definitely very interesting uh, to see how this all uh plays out 
Okay, Daniel, thanks a lot uh, for your time. I really ap appreciate you taking your time to do the presentation. Uh, are there any links that you would like us to share that uh, you can be found or reached at? Um, so, so, just, so for this presentation, just feel free to Google Ner Nervous Network, uh, Godwoken, and or go just go to our Discord where or, or our telegram groups where we will give you all the information that you need to, to use this stuff it's all open source and yeah thank you so much uh, for hosting me it's a great great pleasure to be here as i said among very big reputable players i also want to wish everyone who's participating in the hackathon uh, a good coding and i hope uh, i know not everyone can win but i hope uh, you will do your best uh, yeah, but we still have many bounties, so I think a lot of people will win. And uh, yeah, it was uh, my pleasure to host you. Uh, again, thanks a lot. And we'll put some links in the description so uh, people can find you. All yeah. right. And, uh, that's it for today. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Thank you so much, guys. Wish you a great day.